Did I miss it? Did I miss my chance to cash in on the Moon Knight books? The show's over. Ah, oh, fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we got ourselves a box from CGC. It's been 300 and 83 days since these books went out to CGC after having been signed by Bill Sienkiewicz and Donny Cates and Frank Miller when last summer I was at Torpedo Con and I can't believe it. It's finally back. Uh, I probably should have been sending in um, Black Panther 2 books because based on what I actually sent in, thinking that I might have a chance to capitalize on the Moon Knight show, um, I'm a little bit late. I'm a little bit late, but in this video, we're gonna open up the books. We're gonna show you guys what I got. We're gonna see what grades I got. And then after I open everything up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process and maybe a little bit of how I feel about CCS. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps for the channel, doing those things I appreciate. But let us get into this video here today. Of course, this is the fun thing that we gotta do. We gotta do this unboxing. Where did I put my knife? Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, maybe you guys don't know or you weren't following the channel at the time or you never saw that video, but last year I went to a comic book show called Torpedo Con Comics or Torpedo Con. Uh, of course, Torpedo Con is put on by Torpedo Comics, uh, the comic book store based out of Las Vegas. Uh, awesome show, had a lot of fun, got a lot of great books out of that show. And one of the things that I ended up doing was getting a bunch of assigned books that you see right here. Now, for me personally, I'm not someone who's necessarily like super into getting signed books or it's, you know, it's not, it's not super important to me to have signed books, but uh, you know, somebody who was watching the channel had reached out to me and said that they had pre-purchased a bunch of signings already. And then they themselves couldn't actually make it to the show. So they just asked me if I want to have their signed books and, you know, in exchange, you know, maybe I could get one book signed from. So I took them up on that offer and I actually got a bunch of signings. The only problem for me is that I didn't actually have any books by Frank Miller, Donny Cates, and uh, Bill Sienkiewicz that I actually felt were worthy to get signed. So I was kind of in this awkward position where I actually had to go around the show and hunt for some comics to be signed, find ones that you know seemed like they were in pretty good shape, and then I had no options to press them either. So I actually had to send them into CCS after the fact. So uh, in this video, we're gonna go through the books that I had. I'll talk about each one. Uh, I did do a quick peek of the grades because I kind of wanted to prep for this video and talk about everything. And then also, you know, uh, overall just kind of talk about uh, what I got for the graders notes. So this first one I got right here is uh, called Cross Crossover number one. This, of course, is a book uh, that is done by Donny Cates. Now, this is actually a book that um, I had bought off of the shelf uh, at my local comic book store uh, when it came out. And lo and behold, when I got Donny Cates to sign it, apparently this came back as a 9.6, 9.6 white pages. I have absolutely no idea why this book is a 9.6. If we go over to the Greater's Notes, we actually do not see anything. So, uh, Thanks CGC for not giving any info. Um, I'm really not sure why this book we get a 9.6. I'm sure you guys have had this experience before where you know basically it's virtually the same exact grade. I don't know why it got knocked down. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just general shelfware. I mean, I've seen I've seen 9.8s look exactly the same to this, but hey, you know, crossover, kind of an interesting storyline. I uh, thought it would be kind of cool to get uh, Donny Cates to sign this one just because uh, you know it was an indie book. You know, obviously this is something that you know, he's probably working on to get optioned to some degree. So I figured I had that one, I would get it signed. Why not? Um, I guess it's still a pretty cool book. And, you know, for me, I think that these books I'm getting back here are going to be good ones to do as, uh, you know, maybe some giveaways on the channel. All right, this next book I got right here is another Donny Cates book. I had three Donny Cates signatures uh, to take care of. Uh, this was a copy of King in Black number one. It was actually a copy that I had also bought at my local LCS. And uh, lo and behold, we got Donny Cates to sign it. And ooh, we got a 9.8, 9.8 white pages uh, signed by Donny Cates right there on the bottom. So this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm actually pretty optimistic about the future of King in Black as a event film, possibly at some point. You know, I mean, I think that there, we're all kind of building up to Null, at least in the Sony-verse. So it does feel like a very strong possibility that King in Black could be the like sort of event multiversal threat crossover that Sony eventually builds to. Whether they can pull it off or not, that's a whole other story. And you know, in many ways, this could be like this generation's Infinity Gauntlet sort of thing. So uh, I have sort of imagined this book right here is like having a Infinity Gauntlet number one signed by Jim Starlin. So I think that this one is a pretty cool one and probably will stay in the PC 
at least for a little bit of time. All right, and the third, the third book I got signed by Donny Cates right here is this one, Venom number one. Uh, they were actually supposed to give us an extra King in Black number one. That was just something you got when you visited Donny Cates table. So I was actually gonna walk away with two King in Black number ones, uh, but they didn't have any copies. All they had was Venom number one, which is still a cool book. Like, I mean, I think again, what Donny Cates did with Venom was amazing. And what did we get on this one off of his, Donny Cates table? And it is a 9.8, so very, very cool. We got 9.8 there, you can see the signature for Donny Cates right there on the bottom. Uh, White Pages, again, just a cool book to have. I mean, I don't think that this sells particularly high as far as its dollar amount. I mean, I, I think that uh, there's quite a few signed Venom books out there, but still a very, very cool book to have in the collection and maybe do as a giveaway at some point in the future. Let's go on now to this one right here. So I had uh, three Donny Cates ones and I had three Bill Sienkiewicz ones. Uh, in case you guys don't know what happened, I'll put a link in the description or in the annotation of what had happened in my original signing. But I basically had a CGC signing disaster where uh, Bill Sienkiewicz had signed these books, uh, but actually they got squished together. And so there was a bunch of smearing over all of them and he had to like, remark them in order to make them appear better. So he actually had to double sign this one, or no, 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 not this particular one, but he had to fix his signature, which came right there on the bottom. Sorry about the glare. Uh, but yeah, it, originally when he signed it, it was all smeared and stuff and he had to actually fix it. Uh, you guys can see the video and stuff. But this is one that I thought was just a cool cover. You know, at the time when I got these books signed, you know, we were months, months out from Moon Knight. So I figured like I would get them back in time for that. In fact, at the time in which I sent them in, I think that that was the estimated turnaround time, so it was right around Moon Knight. So uh, I was thinking, you know, hey, Moon Knight might be really cool. Maybe we're gonna get a Werewolf by Night appearance in Moon Knight, so I figured this might be a cool book to get uh, Bill Sienkiewicz to sign. So uh, I found this one in one of the bins, and what did we get with our grade? Oh, we got a 9.6, very, very close to a 9.8 right here. Again, I'm not sure, I, I do actually see, I mean, there are one, to too many, too many, many, many color breaks right there. So I figured that's probably why it knocked it down. I mean, it's a full black cover. Pretty tough to get this one in the 9.8. Uh, well, you know, 1983 book, maybe not so tough. I don't know, black covers are, are tricky, uh, but you know, I didn't really have any options. I just had to find one copy that looked pretty good. So I'll, I'll take a 9.6 overall. I think that that's actually pretty decent. We didn't have Werewolf by Night show up in Moon Knight, unfortunately, but we are seeing him in the Halloween special. So this could be a cool kind of book for you know the future maybe pe uh, people want to get their hands on them uh, so we'll see all right the second uh moon knight book i got signed for myself is this one right here moon knight number one did i miss the boat to sell my copy because this is a book that has been plummeting uh really really hard uh if you guys actually know um yesterday i put out my video about the bronze age index and this book right here is actually the number one selling book of the bronze age you know so when we go through the top 100 sold as far as all the bronze age graded books that have been sold in the market uh, no book sells more than this one right here and uh, this is one of those books that has really been tanking a lot in its value uh, this one was one that definitely had a color break up here in the you know upper upper left corner you can see up there that there's actually a couple color breaks in the top right corner so i wasn't too sure what this would grade out to be uh, i am looking at the spine and I don't know, there are some pressable defects that I still see on it. So I, I'm a little bit disappointed with uh, CCS's job on this. I mean, the other books I think they did a good job on, but I think that this one could have been pressed a little better because lo and behold, the grade we got for this one is a 9.0. So not very good, especially if you know what the values are for this thing. Uh, 9.0s basically sell right in line to what the raw cost for you know a copy of this thing would be. I mean, really, you know, outside of a 9.8, this book is not that valuable overall, but you know, it's a pretty cool signature. I like that he actually signed it in pink right here over the title. It kind of matches the uh, bubble aesthetic of the Moon Knight uh, trade dress itself. So a cool book for sure, you know, 9.0. Uh, definitely some, you know, it doesn't look like CCS did much cleaning on it. Okay, here you guys can see, uh, this is actually what the back is right here. He actually drew a image of Warlock on the back because basically he had all this sort of smeared ink right here from having the books get put together. So he actually had to sort of 
uh, draw that into a warlock picture. So uh, that's why he drew this warlock here on the back and he also signed it once again down here. So uh, double signed 9.0 with a remark of warlock on the back. So I guess that's pretty cool. You know, uh, would have been nice to get a higher grade. Uh, I'm not really sure how, how high it could have graded because of that one color break in the upper right corner. Maybe it could have got a 9.2 uh, if all of the pressable defects were smeared out of it. All right, three more books to show you guys here. These are three books that I got signed by Frank Miller um, and one of them is one that was signed by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz. We'll talk about that one in a second. But this one right here is actually uh, for the guy who gave me uh, all of his prepaid signed things. He had made a request to me that if I could find this book right here, Spawn Number 5, which is actually a book written by Todd McFarlane, uh, if I could find this one and get the back cover signed by Frank Miller. And the reason he wanted to do that is because the back cover right here is actually a full page ad for Frank Miller's Sin City. So you can see that Frank Miller actually signed across the chest right there in red ink. So pretty, pretty cool. I mean, I don't think that there's gonna be too many books that are, you know, spawn number five uh, signed by Frank Miller on the back. Uh, but lo and behold, we got a 9.8 gray with this one, white pages. I know it's a little bit bright uh, for you guys, but you know, a very, very cool book. This is definitely gonna be one that I send off to him as a thank you for sending me these signed books. Uh, I'm really glad that I was able to find him a 9.8 copy. Again, I had to just hunt for this one and I did find one in a booth and I wasn't too sure, you know, what it was going to grade out to be, but uh, luckily it did get a 9.8. I mean, it looks clean overall. I don't really see any color breaks. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that it got a 9.8 and uh, this is pretty cool. I mean, I doubt that Frank Miller has signed the back of this specific book on this ad page uh, that often. I mean, I can't imagine that there's too many copies out there. So I think it'd be a cool thing for uh, him to eventually get Todd McFarlane to sign the front. And then you'd have a Todd McFarlane front sign and then a back sign by Frank Miller. So could be a cool project for him in the future. All right, second to last book here is one that I pulled out for Frank Miller to sign. Uh, I love the signature that he actually put on this, th that blue ink. Uh, really works really well with this one here. But this one, of course, is Marvel Team Up number 95, first appearance of uh, Mockingbird. Uh, this is one of those books that, you know, I pulled out thinking, hey, maybe I'm going to get my books back for Hawkeye. And who knows, maybe Mockingbird will show up in Hawkeye. And lo and behold, she actually did in, in some way. I realized we didn't get a full Mockingbird appearance. But I could imagine that when we get, you know, whatever the next Avengers movie is, like Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars, and they do like the team up sequence, I could actually see them bringing Mockingbird into that battlefield sequence. Uh, so this is one that, you know, I pulled out of the bin. Uh, it looked pretty good overall. I guess I see a couple spine ticks here, but nothing too crazy. Uh, but let's see what grade I got. I got for this one is a 9.4. So, you know, not too bad overall. I'm trying to, you know, evaluate how CCS did you know, if I'm really analyzing their pressing. I mean, I still see a couple pressable defects on this. So I'm not totally convinced that they give this the tender love and care that other pressers might give if you, you know, have a personal relationship with them. This is probably something that they put through the machine once and then whatever quality it comes out as is just what they're gonna send it in as. So, you know, if they don't actually get that pressable defect out that first time around, I think that you're pretty much, you know, SOL at that point. Uh, but this is still a cool book to have. I mean, 9.4 white pages. I think that this probably could have got a 9.6 if I'm being honest. Because uh, I've looked at other 9.4s that are definitely worse than this one here. Um, but, you know, again, still a very, very cool book. Uh, I love how Frank M Miller did his signature right here. Not sure what I'll do with this one. Maybe it could be another giveaway for the channel or something like that. Um, I might hold on to it for a time. I think it's a pretty cool book overall. All right, and the last book I got right here is one that I was actually able to get double signed by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz. Uh, I had the idea, you know, when I was trying to think about what books I could get signed, uh, I had this sort of like epiphany that, you know, in this particular book right here, Bill Sienkiewicz actually did the interior art for Moon Knight number 15, and Frank Miller and Ju Joe Jusco uh, did the cover together. So I thought, hey, you know, what an opportunity to get a double signature situation. And uh, this is another one of those things where you can see that it got ink, ink smeared when Bill was signing it. So what he actually did to fix that is he remarked the Moon Knight on the wing. So he was really, really kind uh, to do that uh, on his own accord. Additionally, this is another back that got smeared. You can see like kind of down here, it's got uh, his signature, but it was actually from the other side of the book. So he turned it into another warlock image, called it Moon Warlock right there. So kind of a cool remark on the back. Uh, but this one was one like all the other ones I had to sort of just find a, you know, in a bin somewhere. And it was a really good copy overall. I do see one color break up here in the corner 
So I guess it wasn't ever gonna be a 9.8 candidate. I also do see some creasing here that probably could have been pressed out as well. Uh, we'll take a look at the grader's notes in a second, but let's reveal the grade that I got on Moon Knight number 15, and we got a 9.4 white pages. So not too bad overall. I do think that this probably, like the Marvel Team Up one, could have got a 9.6, you know, if it was really, really uh, uh, cared for. I can see that this has like a, that spine crease that, you know, gets uh, the pressure from books leaning on it. So it doesn't seem like they were able to fully press that out, even though that is a defect that you could press out. Uh, but this is definitely a book that, you know, for me, I think is probably going to stay in my PC uh, just due to the memories I have with it. It was my CGC signing disaster book. I think it's pretty cool. It's, you know, kind of a one of one. You know, there's not too many double signatures of this book, it, you know, I, or actually, I don't, I don't know how many there are, but I can't imagine that there are that many, especially with the Moon Knight remark on the wing right there, which I think looks pretty cool overall. So super, super happy to have this book and the Warlock remark on the back. Well, those are the books I got signed, but before we wrap it up, let's kind of jump into the grader's notes here. This is one of the things I think is, you know, kind of uh, something that a lot of people are complaining about with CGC. I mean, with everything going on with, you know, some of the negative PR, it's like optics like this that I think cause a lot of frustration in the community. You know, I, I realize that on 9.8s when you get them, uh, CGC is not really gonna give you grader's notes because I'm sure on their end, they're just assuming, I mean, what do you actually care if it's a 9.8 grade, why do we need to give you graders notes? So I can kind of understand that. But when I look at Moon Knight number 30 right here, and it's 9.6 off white to white, and there's no graders notes, I mean, it would be kind of nice to understand why this book didn't get you know, graders notes at a 9.6, I'd love to know what that one flaw is. Similar with the crossover number one, like again, it's basically a perfect book. Like I have no idea why this book got a 9.6 and why there's no graders notes. I mean, at least they could do is, you know, say, hey, one spine tick in the lower right corner or whatever the case is. That would just be really helpful for people to understand why the grades are what they were. Now, as I look to the graders notes that I got for some of these books right here, I mean, there are some things that are sort of frustrating when I see them. Knowing that I sent it into CCS to get pressed, you can see that the graders notes right here are very light creasing to cover, very light spine stress lines to cover. Now, we can't do anything about the spine stress lines. Uh, that's totally understandable, can't press those out. But you can see right here, very light creasing to cover. I mean, when we send it in to get pressing by CCS, uh, in theory, that very light creasing to cover shouldn't exist anymore, at least if they're doing a good job with it. So it is kind of frustrating that, you know, you have to send it into CCS, you wait over a calendar year because the turnarounds for their pressing service is so long and there's still creasing on the cover. Uh, that's pretty frustrating overall. Additionally, if I look at the Moon Knight one, uh, again, light, stress line, uh, light spine stress lines to cover, but another grader's note here is light creasing to cover. So again, light creasing to cover is something that should be pressed out in theory. And then this one right here, light spine stress lines to cover, that's totally fine. So maybe the, you know, uh, Marvel team of 95 is a 9.4 and there's nothing that could be done with that. But, you know, it's just one of those things that, I f that feels kind of bad that when you get the books back and you've been waiting this long from CCS and you get the graders notes and the graders notes are basically saying like, hey, you should go get your books pressed because there's a couple defects on there. Uh, it just doesn't feel like their service is running up to what it should be doing. I don't really know what's in the works for them to improve that. But, you know, for me in the future, I personally wouldn't use CCS again. Uh, the only reason I really used them this time around is because I was just sort of in a situation where I had to get books at the show and the only way I could press them was to go through CCS at that time. Well, anyways, can't really complain too much. I mean, I'm still pretty happy with finally getting this book right here. Let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever used CCS? Uh, what is your experience doing signed books and pressing with them? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and we'll see you in the next video.